Hello everyone. Uh, I just want to make a short uh, video to, today. I'm going to be in the King James Version of the Bible. And uh, I'm going to be in 1 Thessalonians 5. I'll probably read 12 through 14. It's in the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, and it says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and esteem them very highly in work in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourself. And this is the verse I want to read to you. And now we exhort you, brethren, and he's talking about three different classes of people and how to handle those people. They're different. Now we exhort you, brethren, to warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and then in general, be patient toward all men. Um, there, there's, uh, there's a way to handle different types of people. I'm not saying that I know how to do it. I'm just saying that the, I believe that there is with all my heart. Um, if he said to warn the unruly, to, um, comfort the feeble-minded and support the weak. If you comfort the unruly, you have just misapplied it. Uh, if you warn the feeble-minded, you've just applied God's directions. And if you uh, warn the weak, you've misapplied things. So I, I'm praying for wisdom that God will give me. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, pre I preach different sermons. Uh, I think mostly I, I'm, I'm I think that maybe I lean towards the teaching side of the thing, of everything. But uh, I have warned uh, the fear of God. I'm for the fear of God. And uh, I have seen that in some of my sermons before. It was fear, fearful even to me. Uh, but if you warn and warn and warn and you're warning uh, feeble-minded people, uh, I think that and it takes wisdom to know. To me, it takes wisdom to know whether somebody's just being unruly or if they really don't understand something. Um, it, it takes the wisdom of God to know correctly which ones you're dealing with. So the next time that we start to warn someone, consider if you know for sure that they are unruly, because that's the ones you're supposed to warn. Unruly disorderly and disruptive and not amenable to discipline or control. Kate tried to control her unruly emotions. Nobody could tell the man with unclean spirit anything in the fifth chapter of uh, Mark because he was in a state of rebellion, which is one of the 17 works of the flesh. Watch yourself and beware when you have a temper and no man can tell you anything. Watch out for the rule-breaking men who uh, will abide by no rules and will listen to no one. It starts out when unruly men are children, and they can't be made to sit down and be quiet. You know, I, I have a theory. I think if you can train a puppy, then you can train a child. Uh, the, the man in the fifth chapter of Mark, no man could uh, constrain him. And no man um, could restrain him. No man could control him because he had unrestrained actions. The most frightening things that can happen to a man is for him to be out of control like a car that's skidding on wet pavement. A man that won't listen to others is beginning to only listen to himself and God just may be giving him over to himself like the, like the man cut himself in the fifth chapter of Mark. Because left in that condition, uh, the devil need not do anything. Just leave us alone and give us enough time, and we'll finish off ourselves. Lord, whatever you do, don't turn me over to myself, because every time I've turned over to myself, I have a tendency to destroy and tear down everything that I had built up. I'd almost rather be turned over to my enemies than to myself because you, uh, nobody can hurt you like you can yourself. There should be compassion towards every man, toward all men, 
Not every Christian is as mature as other may be. As a result, there's always those who are around us that are weak in the faith. And this verse gives, Paul gives some insight and direction how we should react and deal with those people who may have been a sti different stage of spiritual development than others. Going back to the one unruly. Um, this refers to people who are out of the rank. I was in the service, the military, in the army, and you had rank, and uh, there was order in there. Uh, those people refused to march in line with the rest of the people. Uh, you, they'd, they'd tell you to, I think it'd say, dress right, dress, or whatever they said, and you'd put your arm out and make sure that you're lined up with this man. You weren't concerned about this one. You was concerned about that, that way. So a lot of people are looking at everybody else and seeing whether they're in line or not, and they're way out of line themselves. Those people are the ones that refuse to march in line with the Lord, but there must be rules, and there are. The Bible is our rule book. Our duty as a child of God is to help those who have trouble marching according to the Lord's drumbeat. When we see a brother walking out of formation, we'd love him and do the best we can to warn him and help him get back in line. I mean, let's face it, every child of God thinks they're more mature than the next. If that's really the case, then we have to restore those who consider weaker than, them, than ourselves. Restore ones that's weaker than ourselves. But the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. A parent that is raising an unruly child must ask himself from time to time, is there any hope? Now, the feeble-minded, you don't warn them, you comfort them. This expression has nothing to do with some, it, it, it refers to those that's weak in the faith. Those who seem to be blown off course by just anything that comes along. They, they're they quitters. Uh, it seems that everything coming along causes them to fall by the wayside. I've referred to yo-yo Christians. I mean, there's people that's uh, down today, up tomorrow. You never know where uh, to uh, find them. My, Melinda's brother, he didn't have salvation as far as I knew. His, he sure was a good old boy. And he referred to somebody and he told me that they was the same every time he saw them. And that impressed me, uh, that that's the way I wanted to be. Uh, they're always looking on the downside of life. As a result, they're easily influenced to give in and to give up. Our duty is to encourage these folk to be strong in the Lord, to learn to look after him rather than the circumstances. You know, uh, we, we have a, if we live on a busy street in town in Huntsville, you'd have a fence so your child couldn't go out and in the traffic. And you'd watch that child and make sure that he was safe. And uh, the Bible speaks about putting a hedge around, uh, uh, filling in the gap. We must take these little children that's in our church and surround them with our elders. Support the weak. It's speaking about those people who have, have the least little thing to make them mad or cause them to quit. When we deal with this type of person, we're quick to encourage them and point them back to the right pathway. Our job is to strengthen their faith. The word support literally means to hold on to or cleave to. Paul is telling us not to let them fall. Some people need nothing more than to simply grow up. I challenge you to look at your own life. If there are any areas that you're immature as a child of God, please ask the Lord to help you mature. Otherwise, you'll have problems there, and you may eventually be a problem yourself because of that. Be patient towards all men. We're, we're also reminded that not every child of God matures at the same rate. We exercise extreme caution with those in the church that we do not allow the uh, that we do not allow the little problems that are bound to arise throw us off court or bring us into discord, into the fellowship. We don't need to be guilty of giving up on each other. It says, Wherefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. In other words, act mature and don't be childlike in your dealings with one another. 
but it should be forgive this towards all men. You know, charity keeps no record of offenses. Uh, but it seems like some people do. We used to, I have a friend. I, I don't get to be around him much anymore, Brother Tom Brewer. And uh, me and Brother Jack Kelly, we we love Brother Tom. Uh, we really like to kid him. And uh, I quoted this scripture to him in fun. I said that the Bible said, one done really to comfort the feeble-minded and support the weak. And I looked at Brother Tom and I said, God bless your heart. <laughs> like he was feeble-minded. And he'd say, ah. And, uh, but, you know, uh, we need to, we need to try to help everybody we can, and there's a different way of handling people. I pray to God for wisdom to know how to handle different people. Um, Brother David Jones was really good in the altar, and he told somebody I heard him or whatever he said that some people in the altar you got to push them down, and they'll find their way back up. And he said some are weak, and you got to pull them up. Now here's the thing about that. You got to know which who, which one's which. Uh, we're dealing with uh, people like they're unruly, and not all of them are. And uh, so, I really wish you'd put something in the comments and let me know how uh, how what you need and how everything is. Uh, so, and if you need anything, I give my phone number out two five six five zero eight forty four ten. If you need me. And if you don't need me, at least pray for us. We're in the worst time I've ever seen in my life. And so may God bless you and hope God will tell me what you need until next time.